So when I initially began looking into this issue of building rockets that are far larger than the rockets you currently build at the moment, or like larger than um, the Saturn V, or rockets even the size of the Empire State Building, um, the statistics I found on the internet for the, um, the strongest space-grade aluminium was 690 megapascals. Um, the strongest carbon steel we have is about 890 megapascals. I was comparing this to hemp thermoplastic, which I understood to have an ultimate tensile strength at the time of 1500 megapascals or so. So I was like, okay, well, it seems as though we can build rockets that are five times larger. Hemp thermoplastic is lighter than aluminium. Hence, we can um, build an airframe that's twice as large if we need to. Um, and therefore, we can gain a larger, stronger airframe, since if um, some, if any material you're using, say a rocket, is twice the tensile strength of another material, you can in essence double the size of the airframe and thereby double the effective tensile strength of the material, right? If you use twice as much of it, you get twice the tensile strength, but it's still as light as what you were using before, so it, it kind of makes no difference. However, like what I've realized now is like, um, they are using very strong materials, obviously, in the airframes of rockets. Um, like, they're using titanium aluminium alloys and things like this, which have an ultimate tensile strength of about 1,100 megapascals. So, it's kind of edging towards hemp thermoplastic strengths. Um, but, like, really, the thing about it is. It's still not as light as hemp thermoplastic, those alloys. So you can still, like, via the same principle, um, double up on the size of your airframe and make it stronger. So what I said is still valid. <laughs> like, the basis of what I said is still valid. Now, you know, um, the real reason we're not using composites and plastics in space rockets, um, and I've also mentioned this before, is like, well, we actually do use them, but they're used in... So US Navy, DARPA, NASA, hypersonics research programs, i.e. to build the sort of missiles that can shoot down ICBMs and fly at Mach 15, you know. And um, these sorts of things, and yeah, like shoot down a nuke, like a nuke to shoot down a nuke. Like obviously that technology has a very limited life shelf because, you know, eventually someone will just decide to put a nuke in such a device. Or like that'll be the first thing that the enemy thinks of, or whoever you know the enemy is around the globe now, right? Um, they'll just stick a nuke in in a composite manufactured device, and then you've got to use a composite thing to shoot down the composite thing, and it will get stupid. <laughs> but um, yeah, and it won't be it won't be long, I don't think, for really if we wanted to, you know, using projectiles or using not even like guy, pro, not even you know, um, rocket missiles or rocket-based missiles. We won't even be using that. We'll just be using linear accelerators with a nuke in it, with a nuke in a projectile, and it'll have, like, fins or something to guide it to its target. And it then it wouldn't fly at Mach 15 or something. It'd fly at, like, nearly the speed of light. So be, you know, on the other side of the globe in seconds or in a fraction of a second you could eventually have that technology, I suspect. So it's almost like um, it leads into the suggestion that there's, there's very little point of just continuing to try and kill one another. And there's also this huge myth that, you know, innovation comes from defence. It fucking doesn't, because I know about that nozzle on the Saturn V's engines now, on rocket engines, the Delaval nozzle. It's as likely to come from fucking dairy farming as it is from defence. So there. Um, right, but back on point. Um, however, even with these uh, aluminium titanium alloys that they use in, say, the Saturn V, um, or they use in the Space Shuttle, or all other NASA rockets, it's like, it is still possible with those materials to build a rocket the size of the Empire State Building. However, and this is the crucial point, um, doing so with materials such as that, al uh, titanium isn't expensive because it's uh, scarce. It's not scarce. It's quite abundant on planet Earth. It's um, it is very hard to work with, or it's very hard to machine. It's very hard to I think even in alloys and so on to work with and so on. It's difficult. It's a difficult, uncooperative metal material. Um, so building things out of 
it only really has a few specialised uses. So I don't think the titanium industry is all that big compared to the aluminium industry. And therefore, titanium is expensive. And um, yeah, it, it's also for these sorts of reasons, you know, cost and so on. Um, you can't, you know, you don't want to build an airframe the size of the Empire State Building because it's going to cost you hundreds of billions of dollars to do something like that. However, what if you were not using titanium? What if you were not using these titanium aluminium alloys? What if you were using something more like a composite? Like, why can't you have, um, say for instance, like I've got these here with me. Uh, these are going to get turned into a rocket. Okay, this plastic, you know, on these drums, these hypochlorite drums, like, that is very tough plastic. You can just tell, like, that is, um, I, I think it's probably got a higher Young's modulus than aluminium, just through feeling it, I'd have said. I said, I don't think that is as flexible as any aluminium that I've certainly come across ever. So, um, it, yeah, it's a very tough, durable form of plastic that designed for carrying 21 litres of chemical. Um, but, where are we going? Um, right, so lighter than aluminium, as strong, I'd have said. Um, I think you know, a composite like that would have the tensile strength, or way in excess of the tensile strength of what you could have with even the strongest aluminium. And I think you could even coat it in something like fiberglass to make it a bit more um, robust e still even. You could um, make the airframe, as I've mentioned before, out of something very, very strong, like carbon fibre, and then you could have your uh, Empire State Building sized rocket. But um, then again, thinking like back to plastic, back to hemp thermoplastic even, because um, it's uh, lighter than aluminium by quite a long way, um, you can then use that lack of weight to offset tensile strength and increase tensile strength. But regardless of this, Remember, what are most skyscrapers made out of? Steel. And the tensile strength of steel maxes out at um, about uh, 890 megapascals. And we can build a Burj Khalifa out of that. You know, like, we, we can. And, you know, what has a Burj Khalifa got to carry on the top of it? Way, way, way more weight than uh, an Apollo lander or module or lunar module. Far more weight. You know, like on um, the top of a skyscraper. And I, I had this thought experiment earlier, like what if we um, were like to build a steel frame the size of a Burj Khalifa and instead of coating it in glass and all sorts of other heavy stuff, like um, why don't we just coat it in say aluminium even or some other very light material and try and launch that? And you know, like, um, you know, no hollowed out skyscraper shell with two huge fuel tanks in it. And um, yeah, and then uh, massive engines. So why couldn't we just build a skyscraper, uh, uh, turn a rocket into, a skyscraper into a rocket? Is there any particular reason we couldn't do that? I'm tempted to say like it comes down in part, I think, to um, maybe, maybe even conservative notions. I, I think there's a combination of two things, like conservative notions in engineering about what's possible with rocketry. And um, partly down to stinginess on the part of the US government um, and in the past Richard Nixon particularly, and really since then also. And um, partly down to the space shuttle. And, and I remember like, well, we've got the space shuttle, we don't really need anything other than that in space. That just does everything we need it to do in low Earth orbit. And we're not really thinking of going to Mars yet. And when are we going to Mars? Like maybe soon, maybe sometime soon, I don't know. Especially like that, that would never get us to Mars. Like the Apollo lander, that, that wouldn't get us to Mars. <laughs> like you need something big, big, you need a big, big ship to get to Mars. And crucially to get off of Mars again. So, um, yeah, so I need to get a big rocket up there. A really, really big rocket. Um, and yeah, composites would be the way to go with it, this manufacturer. Save on weight to increase tensile strength. And the other bit of it is, 
it is the US government. It, yeah, it is a conservatism underlying, but for a different reason. It, um, it comes down to secrecy and the fact that these sorts of composite materials, like they've just been, uh, you know, the, the preserve of Navy DARPA black research projects or black projects you know, on hypersonics and things of that nature until really quite recently. And I think, um, you know, the Ariane 5 is, is in no small part constructed out of composites. And um, I think like these new Chinese rockets, they're, they're starting to build them out of plastic as well, basically. Because um, I've watched a few of those launches and what's, what struck me about them, there's something different about those launches, isn't there? They just take off like, like that, don't they? They don't go, go they accelerate far quicker because they're way lighter. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, that's a cool launch. Like, it's just, yeah, like, it was like, shh, like that. Yeah, that's cool. So, um, yes. Building shit out of metal, like, yet yeah, steel has fantastic potential. It's very heavy. You can't really build a steel frame rocket. You can, but it's not going to get to space. So the next the logical thing to do is like, no, all right, not steel, aluminium, because it's lighter. And this is the thought process that they would have been using at the time. You know, when they're making this, aspect, like, well, how to make it out of aluminium? Like, aluminium is not strong enough. We'll have to make an alloy of aluminium. We'll have to mix it with titanium. I remember they only did this out in five, in five years or so. They were really rushing. And, you know, they're getting to crunch time. The rocket won't fly. It's too heavy. You know, like, well, we can't we have time to build a new rocket. We have to shave every millimeter of excess rockets off the rocket. <laughs> so, you know, and like all composites and fiberglass and carbon fiber, uh, they were just starting to have it back then, just about with the space shuttle. However, if they'd had hemp thermoplastic, there's no way they wouldn't have built out of that. And yeah, they'd been making buildings out of plastic and cars out of plastic and aircraft out of plastic. And they'd been far faster. And yes, they'd been building rockets out of plastic. And they'd been cheaper to like, but well, how about Empire State building size? Like, hmm, okay, why not? <laughs> and yes, they would have been doing that. So that's like the point sort of with this project.